Hello, Nick Anderson here with the fake news media, and I am digitally painting my Trump cartoon for today on his mention yesterday of possibly firing Robert Mueller, saying many people have said I should fire Mueller. Yeah, right. I doubt it. So I have him surrounded by mirrors, and they're, of course, all him, which works on a couple levels since he's a narcissist. And so I'm going to be digitally painting, and he's got that orange fake fake skin, but I'm going to do sort of an underpainting, um, which gives it a little bit more richness and depth. So I'm going to do yellow underpainting, and I'm actually going to... Oh, forgot one important step. I often do this when I am in a hurry or not paying attention, or maybe distracted by doing a video. I'm going to hit revert. I did not put it on a separate layer. So select all, float, lock that. Because if I don't put that on a separate layer, I got problems later. I do not want to mess up my line art. All right, starting over again with my underpainting layers. So once again, I'm just going to go ahead and use the same color that I'm going to ultimately use on his hair, which is this sort of yellowish, cotton candy-ish looking yellow. And that will add complexity to it later. I'm using an acrylic brush variant right now. I alternate between acrylics and watercolors. I used to only use watercolors, but I've been going to acrylics lately because they're more opaque, and if I work in layers, one layer doesn't interfere with another, and I don't have to end up erasing anything. And since I've got this color here, I'm just going to go ahead and lay in a little bit of color on his hair back here, so I don't have to go back and find this color again. Save me a little bit of time. So this is pretty simple at this point. It will get more complex as I go along. So now I start laying in that horrible complexion. But you can still kind of see that yellow underneath. Just You won't be able to see it when I'm finished. You'll be able to detect it a little bit. There'll just be a little bit more uh, richness to the color. A little more complexity. I probably won't bother doing it with these ones just because I don't need as much complexity back there. In fact, I don't want to draw the eye to the background. I really want to use color to draw the eye to the foreground. So I'm going to keep it, keep the complexity in the foreground. I like this brush because it's got a little bit of a uh, texture to it. Which one is it? Glazing acrylic. It's got a little texture to it. It's got a little, you can see through it a little bit. It looks very natural. It might be a little dark. I may have to come back in and change that.
have a tendency to work a little faster when I'm doing videos. Is that feeling like you're being watched? Because I am, probably. So then, I end up feeling like, well, I'm being watched, so i got to do it faster, so i got to be entertaining. I can't be quite as slow. Maybe I'll slow down as I get used to doing this, doing these videos. Alright, so now, I think I'm liking that tone. So now I'm going to grab a tapered watercolor to add a little bit of shadow, a little blue. And I like this because it has kind of a hard edge to the, to it. soft shadows and there are hard shadows. I'm also a little bit of a photographer and I study light a little bit and that's actually kind of helped my painting a little bit. too much. Now see this is where I think soft shadow might be a little better is this I'm gonna soften this up a little bit and just use a little bit less color. I'm using blue because it's a complement to orange. Blue is a really good shading color as well. Alright now add a little complexity to the hair a little white highlight. He tends to have a little white here too. And a little bit of shadow. I'm not going to add blue to the yellow because that's going to make it green. I do not like how that's blending. I'm going to go back to this tapered watercolor because of that hard edge it has. Just got a more defined edge, which I really like. I used to use this brush almost exclusively, but because of that hard edge, it can start to be a little distracting. in that background. His hand, his tiny, teeny, tiny little hand that he brags about. I'm going to make a little bit more of a natural flesh tone to make his face look even more freakish. Many cartoonists use the tie as a metaphor and make it extremely long because he wears his ties too long. I'm just not sure that most people really have noticed that, so I haven't really used it much, but maybe they have. I don't know. Alright, 
now. Save. Did I not save yet? Good lord. That's ridiculous. Did a lot of work without saving. That's a no-no. I got distracted. Sometimes I won't realize that I haven't saved everything, saved uh, or put my color on a separate layer until I go to save. And then I have to redo a whole bunch of work, which is not fun. All right, now the suit, he always tends to wear a dark or black suit. Sometimes I'll put him in a different color just to give my, uh, take some creative license. But on this one, I think I'm just going to go ahead with the usual black, gray suit. Because I want to use, I don't want his suit to be distracting. I want to use the color from his face and from the mirrors, the brown from the Probably use brown in the frames of the mirrors to move the eye. That's part of my composition. So color is often a part of the composition. I have to think about the way the eye sees color. Red, obviously, the eye's going to go right here, and orange, yellow. And then the eye will dart around here. And I don't want to compete with that too much by making oops, a lot of uh, other bright colors. So I'm going to start with a lighter gray and grow gradually darker. be using the soft light technique of this brush and then maybe add some hard light from the uh, digital watercolor brush. And there are tons of other brushes but I get too overwhelmed with all of them to experiment with them too much. I experiment with them and then I forget which ones do which so I end up just using a few find with daily deadlines I don't have nearly as much time to experiment as I would like. Let's save this. Always got to produce something and I don't have much time to play with the programs. I've been wanting to try out some new things but I just do not have time. a little perspective. I forgot to give him little buttons right here. Oh well. light coming in from here, I guess. I've already kind of chosen that when I did the face. So I have that little white spot there. That is from the layer above it. I'm going to, that's a little distracting, so I gotta erase that. All right, back to this layer. 
That was from very light watercolor paint. In this case, it's kind of desirable that it doesn't blend. See the way that I'm painting under that layer? That way I don't have to go back in and erase anything. That's okay. I'm going to blend this a little better. And I'm going to add a little bit of hard light in here. I'm going to maybe make it a little blue in these wrinkled areas. So this harder light is just better for showing wrinkles. A more soft, graduated light, better for showing shape. He also forgot his pants. He forgot his pants when he's with Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal. Right. Uh, well, who needs pants? I'm not wearing pants. Just kidding, I'm wearing pants. Now I gotta go back and erase a little bit of this. A little bit more shadow here. It wouldn't be that white. He's pretty white, but his shirt wouldn't be that white because it's in shadow. Well, he's not white, he's orange. But culturally, he's white. That's his base. So, going back and erasing this, but because the flesh color is on a different layer, it is undisturbed. Which is why I love working on computers. Okay. Save that. I'm going to add a little bit more shading here, maybe a little here. It's okay. Uh, it drives me crazy. I'm gonna add buttons here. I'm gonna go back. It just looks weird to me without them. So I'm gonna paint some in. Let's make them kind of a light gray. They look kind of like a weird shape, but let's see. Hmm, I don't like those. I'm going to delete that. 
get my, my brush smaller so I can give it a little bit more shape. Those were like, oh, that's too small. Alright, there we go. There we go. Now that we're talking. They look like blobs. Got a little bit more definition now. Okay. A little too dark. Wait. Oh well. They're a little darker than I'd like. I'm going to erase them a little bit. I mean, they were a little brighter than I would like. So they're too distracting. Okay. Now the mirrors. Um, another layer. And because it fills so well, I'm just going to use this brush. And part of me wants to make these sort of a gaudy gold color because that's my guess is he has that all over his house. But I'm afraid if I do that, it's not going to be good for the composition because of the hair. Yeah, I think I'm just going to make him look like a wood grain color. Keep it simple. Hmm. I don't know, what do you think? Well, since this isn't live, you can't tell me. Um, let's see what one would look like if I did it like a real gaudy looking color. Problem is it's not real ornamental looking. I draw it kind of I drew it kind of simple. So I think that's not working because if it was gaudy like Trump, it would not be simple like these are. And I did sort of a simple uh, design because I'm a little pressed for time, got a late start today. juggling multiple things. That color's not identical. I'll go back and fix that later. slightly different shade, just so they're not all identical. <clears throat> and I will go back later when I merge, so when I finish with the color, I separate it from the line art, and I go back into Photoshop and I merge, I merge it then with the line art there so that it is in a separate channel. And that helps keep it real crisp when it's reproduced in a newspaper and it also actually helps online for some reason. I'm not really sure why. But when I go do that I'm also going to make the background mirrors a little bit lighter to help with the composition, because it will help move the eye around, keep the focus mostly on Trump in the foreground, so you look at that first, and then you look at the background second. Because we use that kind of, our eye sees darkness, is, tends to perceive it as something more in the foreground, and things that are lighter, we tend to perceive as more in the background. So, I think I will stop the video there, and you can see the finished product. I will post a link on my website, or I'll post a link on the video, and you can check it, you can check it out on my Patreon page. Thank you. 
Whoops, that's the wrong thing. This is what I wanted. Good thing I just had an art museum thing up there. It could have been bad. Thanks.